Hey everybody, I haven't uploaded a video to YouTube in the past three to four days because I've been really busy with this project I've been working on, which is mirroring all of my content on another website. I've been doing logic board repair videos for somewhere around four to six years on YouTube now, and I, there's a lot of content there to go through. I was reading this one Reddit post about a video that was done where they were talking about this CTM complaint system that would allow companies to take down videos on modding games and jailbreaking devices and things of that nature. And while that's not exactly what it is that I'm doing, it's close enough and seeing as Kilpatrick and Townsend has contacted me because Apple knows who I am and they would have preferred that certain videos I created not be on YouTube, I kind of get the idea that I should be doing something like this at this point. And even though I necessarily don't take YouTube seriously as a job or my or being a content creator, as if that wasn't obvious from the Rafflecopter and Shia and Kitty video uploads every now and then, uh, the reality is that a lot of people watching the channel have used the content on it to start actual jobs. I mean, people like Tim opened he opened a store in California doing MacBook board repair after a year and a half of watching my stuff at the age of 18 and I've seen a lot of people doing things similar to that so even if I necessarily am not really taking this seriously uh, that there are people who are taking these videos seriously and using it to actually create jobs for themselves so what I did is I decided to get an account on Vimeo I got the business whatever the highest class business account is which is something like 979 bucks a year after tax and what I did here is I have my videos all organized into playlists the Vimeo interface leaves much to be desired so what I did is on my board repair forum that I have over here what I did is I created these two tabs I'm just gonna zoom in so it's easier to see I have repair videos by model and repair videos by problem. And when you click repair videos by model, it'll actually give you a list well, of all the different boards here, like 820-00840, 820-00875, and it'll show you these playlists of videos. And you can, if you can drill down by clicking the menu over here, it'll give you every single board type to all the different MacBooks over the past five to 10 years. So let's say I want to check out something for the 820-2936. I can just click there, and here there'll be a little arrow for the playlist. And you can see all the videos that I've done pertaining to the 820-2936. And when you hover your mouse over, <clears throat> when you hover your mouse over, okay, well, before when you were hovering your mouse over, it was showing me the, the title of the video. It actually is not showing up in Open Broadcaster. Why is beyond me? But when you hover your mouse over the video, it will show you the the title of the video, which is which is pretty cool. So you can go through and see all the different repair videos for that model board, or if you want, you can check out the repair videos by problem type. So over here, I have all the different problem types. So you have quarter fan spin, beeps three times, random kernel panics, X on battery icon, no trackpad, no keyboard, short circuits, not charging battery, not recognizing battery, and so on and so forth. And you could just click on not charging battery. You can click on the little view all. And again, it'll show you all the different videos. And when you hover your mouse over on your computer screen, it'll show you a preview of the title. So what I have here is every single board repair video that I've ever done has been archived, re-uploaded, and not only just re-uploaded, but also categorized and embedded so it's very easy to find an exact video for an exact problem on an exact board, which is something that I should have done with YouTube for a long time, but never got around to it. Now, some people have been saying, it's stupid that you're paying $979 a year for Vimeo. That's dumb. Why are you paying for this? But let's, let's be real here. Even if YouTube did not have this CTM system, even if this did not exist and was not a worry at all, one of the issues with YouTube is that there are a lot of channels where they'll just delete stuff or strike stuff, or the channel is just gone for no reason, and there's no recourse. And one of the reasons for that is that YouTube does, you know, you're not a customer. You know, you, YouTube is something that for all the complaining people do, you're getting for free. You go to youtube.com, you got an upload button, you can hit it, and you, the stuff just gets hosted for free and encoded for free and provided to people for free. And that's great. But one of the downsides of that is that if there's any sort of problem, you get treated like a customer that's paying zero dollars. And, uh, and, and with this content, the whole idea is I want it to be hosted somewhere where I'm not treated like a customer that's paying zero dollars. I would like to pay money 
and be able to actually complain or ask questions and be able to speak to an honest to God human being that can help me with that problem. And you know, the reality is the one of the reasons there's not a lot of competitors to YouTube is when you add up the bandwidth cost, the storage cost, and the computing costs, it letting anybody upload, you know, twenty to forty terabytes of stuff and host it to millions of people all around the world is not necessarily the most profitable business model, which is why they're losing something like one to two billion dollars a year. If they were not losing one to two billion dollars a year, I'm sure there'd be a lot of competitors out there. But one of the reasons that I believe there's not is because that model is just not profitable. So there are people who've asked, why didn't you use something like BitChute? And I was reading up on it. It seems to be peer-to-peer -peer based. So whether or not the video loads really quickly for you is going to be dependent on whether the people sharing the file have good internet. And I just, I didn't really want to deal with that yet. I wanted this stuff to be instantly and quickly available to anybody who wants to view it in high quality. I also... I, I could have set up my own hosting system, but let's be real, like seven terabytes of hosting uh, with millions of people viewing these four terabytes of files every month, that, that's going to wind up being some fairly expensive hosting. And even if it's close in price, I'm going to have to set up a lot of stuff from scratch. Vimeo just has all the infrastructure already there. Uh, it has a commenting system. It has live streaming. It ha It's just made for video, and it, it's cheap enough that I don't really care. I spend, I probably spend this much money just with the store's electric bill every month at this point. So nine seventy nine a year is really, in my opinion, a drop in the bucket to make sure that all of this stuff stays up uh, in, in case anything happens with YouTube. If anything were to happen with Vimeo, I'd happily explore those other options, but I don't see that being a necessity yet. So some of the cool things with Vimeo so far, A, the video encoder is considerably better than YouTube. So I did not re-download YouTube videos to upload to Vimeo. I re-uploaded all of the stuff from my old, my archive of encodes to Vimeo. And I've noticed the microscope footage in v Vimeo is considerably better than what you get on YouTube. It's a considerable step up. The second benefit to Vimeo for all of you is since Vimeo does not have any sort of monetization system, there are no ads. So even if you are a free user of Vimeo, you can view all of these videos that are embedded on my website here, whether it's on my website or on Vimeo, without having to watch any pre-roll or post-roll ads, and you're not going to see any banner ads in the video. You may occasionally hear shilling for store.rossmangroup.com, but that's not an ad. Uh, that, that, that's, that's shilling. So that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say since I'm done uh, with categorizing these hundreds and hundreds of videos and dating them and putting them into categories and putting this crap on the website. I will have time to go back to doing normal daily to every other day board repair videos, which I have not had time to do recently. I'm also aware that this kind of looks like shit. Uh, I'm not exactly good when it comes to web design or CSS or any of that stuff. So when you click this, it, it kind of like it, it loads, and then it, but then it goes back up into this little thing over here. I actually never even bothered removing the V Bulletin logo for my form and putting mine. Uh, it, it, it's something that I plan on doing. It, it's something I plan on getting to. But I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much to all the people who have been viewing this stuff. Thank you to all the people who have been using this information to start your own businesses or start fixing things for yourself or for other people or getting people interested in the hobby that has allowed me to become economically free and independent. I really appreciate it. And honestly, there's nothing better in the world than being able to share your success with thousands and thousands of other people. Because then you get to relive it over and over and over again. And I really hope that this uh, helps me continue to do that in case YouTube ever decides to do something stupid, which let's face it, is very, very likely. So uh, with that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something.